to the office and advised me that this special agent was not going to wear the wire and that I should forget about it. Later, while at the United States Attorney's offices on other matters, the question of the special agents wearing the wire was brought up by one of, these attorney, one of the attorneys. The assistant U.S. attorney still desired the special agent to wear the wire. A conference telephone call was then arranged between three assistant U.S. attorneys, a fellow FBI special agent, and myself calling from Chicago, Illinois, and speaking with the special agent and his supervisor in Dallas, Texas. The assistant U.S. attorneys expressed to this special agent the importance of the investigation and the purported wire. The special agent stated that he would only record the individual if he told him that he was wearing a wire. One of the assistant U.S. attorneys told the special agent they would get a meeting location and wire it so that the special agent would not have to wear the wire. This was not acceptable to that special agent, who then proposed placing a tape recorder on a table and then speaking with the individual. When this was deemed unacceptable by those present, the special agent advised he would meet with the individual and report the meeting on an FD-302, which is an official report form, as he had done before in response to a similar request from the FBI in Tampa. The assistant U.S. attorneys were presented, advised, present, that the, advised that this was not what they desired and, and inquired what the root of the objection was to wearing the wire. Special agent advised that he feared for his safety. When he was told the FBI could protect him, the special agent told them he did not trust the FBI to protect them. The assistant U.S. attorneys continued to ask why the special agent would not wear the wire, and he stated, a Muslim does not record another Muslim. Sometime thereafter, the U.S. attorneys, believing that this telephone conference would be revisited, drafted a document describing the events discussed. I believe this was done as they felt the decision reached would come into question at a later date and they desired to have a record of this position. I believe this document may also have been signed by the United States attorney and is maintained by his office. Later, while speaking about a different matter to a special agent in the FBI Washington field office, I explained this pro the problems I was having getting this special agent to wear a wire. I was informed that his office had problems with the special agent previously, and I was, I was advised that his office had drafted a document and sent it to the FBI Dallas office expressing their concerns about the special agent, contacting subjects of their investigations, and not disclosing these contacts to the special agents conducting these investigations. Further, I was told uh, to speak with a particular special agent in, uh, in Tampa's FBI office. And the, this special agent is a friend of uh, Mr. Wright's, and he related that the subject of one of his investigations, who was Muslim, had once reached out to this special agent we're talking about, and he refused to wear a wire when they requested. We have here the declaration of, in addition to the document I just read from, the declaration of Barry Carmody, which is sworn to under oath, and which was signed, which is signed uh, today. Excuse me. Oh, and Wrights is uh, sworn under oath as well, the document that you all have. I, Barry Carmody, a resident of Hillsborough County, Florida, hereby declare as follows. I am retired 34-year veteran special agent of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. During my service with the FBI, I was charged with conducting criminal and foreign counterintelligence investigations pursuant to Department of Justice regulations and U.S. law. From 1995 through February of 2000, and in the course of conducting a lawful investigation within the jurisdiction of the FBI's Tampa office, I had occasion to seek the assistance of a special FBI special agent assigned to the Dallas FBI office. I asked Special Agent Blank to record a telephone conversation during a meeting with an individual involved in an open FBI criminal investigation. Special Agent Blank refused to record this telephone conversation, saying he would make the call but would not record it. I said this was unsatisfactory. It had been discussed with the US, United States Attorney's Office in Tampa, and we required a recorded conversation. He still refused to record the conversation. The refusal to record the telephone conversation may have had negatively impacted the conduct of the FBI's investigation. I informed FBI headquarters twice about this incident, in 1998 and again in 2000, but I am aware of no disciplinary action being taken against him in this matter. In fact, I have been told that Special Agent Robert G. Wright, Jr. had a similar experience with Special Agent Blank in the course of a subsequent investigation he pursued. 
thus done and signed in the presence of undersigned witnesses on May 30, 2002, and it's signed here by Barry Carmody. In conclusion, let me thank uh, the excellent work of David Shippers, who has become a national advisor to Judicial Watch. Judicial Watch is in the process of opening a Chicago office. We are working together on this matter. As you can see, it's not just a question of Special Agent Raleigh. It's not just a question of Special Agent Wright. But there are many FBI agents that are willing to come forward and will come forward to tell the story about what is happening at the FBI. And despite politically convenient statements that the FBI is being reorganized, only after these agents either came forward or it was known were going to come forward, and it was known that Special Agent Wright was going to come forward today before Director Mueller decided he was going to announce an FBI reorganization yesterday, not a coincidence at all. Despite all of that, these are simply cosmetic reforms. As Special Agent Wright has talked about, jurisdiction needs to be removed from the FBI because the corruption is too endemic to allow them to continue to allegedly, allegedly protect the American people. The FBI has not protected the American people. Special Agent Wright was prevented from doing his job. He wished that he could have done his job. You can see the emotion. He broke down in tears at the end of this press conference because he believes that if the FBI had performed as it was supposed to perform, it is very likely that we would not have had September 11th. And unfortunately, even the FBI director and the Attorney General, despite covering up what happened for almost nine months, have now been forced to admit the same thing. We look to you, the members of the media, to force the FBI to take action, to just make full disclosure, to come forward, to allow Special Agent Wright and others to speak freely and fully without threat of criminal prosecution. So the American people, we the people by the people, that's the Constitution, can have control of their own destiny before thousands, and according to the predictions of Vice President Cheney, millions of Americans needlessly lose their lives through nuclear and biochemical and other types of terrorist attacks in this country. Thank you for your attention. We look forward to working with you to get the full information out to the American people. Larry? Yes, David. May I talk to Bob off the speakerphone, please? Yes. Do in the other room. We'll call you on the cell phone. Any questions? Any questions? Lay out for us, you know, how this, what specific things that, that Mr. Um, Wright knows about that actually relate with foreknowledge and terrorist activity in the United States. Yes, this. All we have here is like a Hamas, um, somebody wiring money over to Israel that would help Hamas, and he wants to expand the investigation and someone not wanting to record something. I'm sure there's more to it, so can you lay that out? Yeah. Well, I can lay it out generally. I can't lay out the actual investigations the FBI has threatened criminal prosecution. The issue here, and we would have laid it out, and we were prepared to lay it all out. This press conference was scheduled to last an hour and a half. But in essence, what we're talking about here is what this administration has admitted is the foundation of terrorist activities both domestically and internationally, and that is the funding of terrorism. And Bob Wright conceived of and was in on the ground floor of investigating radical Islamic money laundering in the United States through Islamic charities, banks, and other institutions. If that investigation had been allowed to run its course and be conducted in a professional manner, the monies to fund terrorist operations such as 9-11 would have been cut off. And that's what he was looking into. With regard to Hezbollah and Hamas, these are the groups which primarily are engaged in the money laundering in the United States. Contrary to the statements of our Secretary of State Colin Powell, they are not, or the implications of Colin Powell, who is a tacit supporter of Yasser Arafat, these are not benign organizations. These are organizations that are funding terrorism here and overseas. And if you cut that money off, there's a good chance you would have cut off the monies that ultimately went to 9-11 and other terrorist operations. And you'll see throughout 
what Bob Wright had to say, that 9-11 wasn't the only terrorist uh, event here in the United States. Some of them are classified. Some of them are not known. The FBI has knowledge about many other terrorist attacks that the American people have never been informed of in this country.